guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. You like that? I want to. You like that? You like that? You like that? Welcome in to Mackie and Judd. Early Merry Christmas to all of you as we sit here on this Friday, December 23rd. Vikings Vet Line, a Christmas Eve edition will happen oh, oh, oh. on the Purple Daily YouTube channel tomorrow. Can't promise old Macadac won't get into the Christmas libations before oh, then. Oh, all right. Good for you. I will be responsible. Judd, hopefully you'll be responsible. But uh, Well, I'm planning to be at the stadium, if it's okay with you guys, for the full game this time. Okay. Uh, well, just text us at halftime, and we'll 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 assess how. If we I feel can about stay that. for the whole game this time, I'd well, really yeah, just, just send that. us a text. Send us a text. We'll so do we just put a kibosh on you ever doing that ever again? Right? There's pretty much no scenario that you would leave a stadium at halftime, right? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, won't get fooled again. <laughs> Can't get fooled again. <laughs> I still love that. There's still emails coming. It's a feedback Friday, so we will get to a bunch of emails and. Uh, tweets and different things. You can always hit us up throughout the week on the Score North app. There's a feedback tab, but I still saw a bunch coming in this week. People just like, what a bad fan Judd is. Like, like, like you stormed off as a mad yep. fan. And that's no, we Judd would not have left if we not for peer pressure from Declan or myself. That well, if you so wanted to be part of Ventline, you had to leave the stadium because you can't. The NFL will they'll handcuff your ass. Is he doing a live stream during a trouble? game? They I carry you out all four limbs. I think they also would probably disqualify future vent lines post game from coming from the stadium. Too. It would, yeah, I think so. Yeah, like bad. I think they they could then say you can't like <laughs> bad. you can't now because because rightfully so the people that own the rights I forget who the flagship is they would get upset and report us. Well, and oh. the TV, the TV partners TV, too. I mean, they Fox. probably yeah, they wouldn't I'd be, be happy. About Fox, and I'm about a local. Yeah, I'm more about that. Yeah, I think I'm Fox. Just saying. Would, I'm just the, saying. The, the the visual competition. The NFL you know, takes things very seriously. I know. It's the no fun league, is what they mm. call it. Although they just uh, they just got two billion dollars in their pocket from YouTube to move the NFL Sunday ticket over, which is good for them. I was like, well, that seems like a lot of money for Google to, because Google owns YouTube. Seems like I got a lot of money for Google to pay out. And then I Googled uh, annual revenue year by year. And, you know, they're they're going to make over $30 billion in yeah. revenue over there at that Google company. So, Quick question. Do we or know YouTube. how that's... I'm sorry. YouTube alone is, YouTube alone YouTube. is $30 YouTube billion. Alone. Dollars. Not yeah. Google. So Google is like however much more than that. So. Do we know how this is going to work too? Like, so can you get, like, if, if you are a... A Vikings fan like you, Phil, in Seattle, can you just get the Vikings games, or do, do you have to get the entire package? So you you'd get have every... to pay. You have to pay extra. So like okay. on YouTube TV now out here. So I I pay for YouTube TV. It's like sixty bucks a month or something for all these. It's like having cable, but it's streaming. And then on top of that, for MLB package, for NBA League Pass, for if you want like HBO Max or something, um, you have to. There's like premium tiers that you tack on. Oh, okay. so, so it's, just all, like cable. it's but you literally go into settings, and then you just click the thing that you want to add, and it just adds it. So because it's all connected to your to your Google and, and YouTube account. So uh, it's modern technology. Uh, I don't so, understand. It's a wonder, as opposed to having a satellite dish on top of your uh, your house. But anyways, feedback Friday here. Let's start with this one from Jake Ward. I wanted to get your guys' thoughts on the lack of attention KOC is getting. When the NFL Coach of the Year award gets mentioned, I understand it's Minnesota and the national media puts us on the back burner, but it's so upsetting to watch what KOC has done, the changes he has made, and the culture he has created just to get passed over for bigger market coaches. He's a rookie head coach with an 11 and 3 team, a division winner, and a play caller who's getting Justin Jefferson so open that he's on the brink of a 2,000 yard receiving season. He deserves Coach of the Year school. This weekend's actually a great little spotlight because Brian Dable, I think is getting just as much, if not more coach of the year steam with an inferior record. He was Is there any case to be sure. made for Brian Dable. I mean, the giants, I guess were projected to be worse than the Vikings, but is there any real case right now that KOC shouldn't be ranked above Brian Dable in that discussion? Absolutely not. Who, who's atop the list right now? Sirianni in Philadelphia. Let me pull it up here. Cause Let's I feel see. like, I feel like, uh, KFC definitely is competition, but I also 
come back to, I think the work that he's done with Kirk qualifies him as my vote. If I had a vote, I, I would vote for Kevin. I know Dan Campbell's odds have gone from like 10,000 as of like a month ago to like plus 300. Yeah. Like what he has done in a month is absurd. And if you put a ticket on a plus 10,000, I'd be feeling really good about myself right now. Mm. Um, Nick Sirianni, I'm on VegasInsider.com. Nick Sirianni is a minus 225. Dan Campbell is a plus 250. And then there's a big jump to Kyle Shanahan plus two thousand, Brian Dable plus two uh, twenty five hundred, and then Kevin O'Connell plus twenty eight hundred tied with Doug Peterson. It's kind of amazing. Doug Peterson absolutely mm. should be in this discussion yeah. too. Yeah, Don't, yeah. Great. And Kyle Shanahan's on his third quarterback, and they're still one of the best teams yep. in the league. It's a great coaching job. So all these guys are doing a great job, but oh, I think Kevin O'Connell deserves a little more respect than to be fifth on this list, but. Um, here's a good one. This is from Ty on Twitter. Would you rather get a beer with Kevin O'Connell or Dan Campbell? Oh, it depends. Uh, yeah. One beer? Yeah, cause that, that was my next question. O'Connell. It... Eight beers? DC. D- yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if I want to see like what Dan Campbell D- looks like after eight beers. As long as it doesn't turn on me. Oh, <laughs> man. But if we're going to get a beer and talk like talk like yeah. guy, guy talk for a beer and then and then responsibly head home, Kevin. I think getting eight beers with Dan Campbell would be like being one of those lion tamer guys that yeah. you just you just kind of crossing your fingers and hoping, oh, well, the lion's totally friendly until forget, he's not. Don't forget, though, eight beers, I think, in Campbell's world, probably l- loosens him up. Like, he's not schnockered at eight beers. Yeah. Because he's a big man, and my guess is he holds... My guess is he can hold his alcohol really well. So eight beers would be fun. 16 would be a problem. I don't think the goal is to get schnockered well, with these guys. I think it's just like, no, no, no. I, I interpret it more like, who would you want to sit down and sort of just have a loosey-goosey conversation with? Judd's no, like, I'm a Judd. who can I get blasted you with? Ask me. You ask me. <laughs> okay, I'm just telling you. Judd's right. If it's just a beer, or even let's just call it a drink. One drink. I want one drink with KOC. But but if you're talking about like we're gonna be here a little bit and we're gonna be knocking back on numerous beers, then <laughs> oh I want God, Dan strange. Campbell. That's yes. That's this is this is song. very this is very <laughs> important detail. Song. Huge important detail. I don't know. So you're you're basically saying that you think KOC would get kind of boring after a beer and you're just kind of good, and Dan yeah. Campbell would be more fun after yeah. like three oh, hours God, and yeah. seven yeah. beers. And and also I'm thinking about my own self here. I think Kevin O'Connell would get very bored of me after a few after like one beer. So I know Dan Campbell and I can probably knock him back and and yeah. you know He's shoot right. the bleep for a little bit. Where KOC is like, all right, this guy's oh, weird. Yeah. I will take the tab. Here's oh, the yeah. two beers. Nice to meet you, Declan. Where Dan Campbell's like, you want another? It's like, yes, absolutely, I want another. Let's keep him coming. K- yeah. KOC. Would would get a friend or his wife to call him to interrupt the conversation, so like he would text his wife, "Call me." Yeah. Oh, hey, honey. Yeah. After no, forty five minutes, I'm yeah. on my way home. Yeah, no problem. Hey, hey, Declan. Sorry, got I, I gotta go. Yeah. All right, buddy. De- Dex, knock that one out of the park, right? I'm there. choosing mm-hmm. KOC for one beer or eight, but I do like that Declan just admitted he doesn't think that he is mentally stimulating enough for KOC beyond one beer. <laughs> Not for KOC. There's other people. There's numerous other people yeah. in this world, but not Kevin O'Connell. You just I'm think well you aware would, of that. You wouldn't have enough to offer after no. about 20 minutes. You know what it is? No. It's, so here, here's where I'm here's where I'm going to agree completely with Dex, and but but I don't think he I don't think he's putting himself down. Kevin O'Connell is a former quarterback. He is he is pretty damn cool, and he's like and and he well he wasn't good, but he is a former professional athlete. Okay, guys like that. They run in different worlds, so they'll tolerate you. And Dan talk Campbell to you. was a former. Dan was, athlete. but I think he. he was but one I of the think, guys. Exactly, he's Ticey. Ticey was yeah. one of the guys. No, 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 no. Declan's right all, here, Phil. Phil. Kevin O'Connell was not one of the guys. He's an elite <laughs> mind as a quarterback. Are you kidding? He's wired more. You're like making this up. What do you mean, KOC is not one of the guys? Have you seen his post game locker room speeches? No, Dude, you're just like, you just made up a narrative about Kevin O'Connell. I'm going to tell that you. That his right wife now. would call him because yep. he's no, not, Judd's right. he's, he's not yep. one Judd's of the guys. Dead on here. Kevin O'Connell ran with the goal. Kevin O'Connell is Fonzie. <laughs> Dan Campbell is Ralph Mouth. Ralph Mouth would hang with you. Fonzie would be like, I'm out of here. 
Nice reference from 50 years ago there. Yeah. Hey, you, really if you relatable kids don't want audience. Happy Days, watch Happy Days. <laughs> <laughs> yes, kids, that's your homework assignment. Go watch, watch Happy Days. Happy YouTube days. it. It's free I on do, YouTube. I did go through a Happy Days phase uh, on Nick. I think it was like Nick at Night yep. back in the late 90s when I was mm-hmm. a Nick teenager. Uh, Christian K on Twitter says, on Purple Daily this week, you guys raised an interesting question of what you would give up for a Vikings Super Bowl victory. I talk with my dad about this all the time. When the Vikings win a Super Bowl, we plan. You, can you guess what he plans? The trip to the Super Bowl. No, so he win. says, if when the Vikings win a Super win. Bowl, oh, his, I see. his dad and him will do this. This is what they will sacrifice. Oh, God! Their firstborn. I don't. I don't know. I, they will. Declan, Declan did say he would. He would cut years off his I life would. for a Vikings I would cut Super years. Bowl win. Yeah. That's hard mm-hmm. They will never watch the NFL again. Oh. When the Vikings win the no. Super Bowl, what that is our final destination. That's genius. I love this. No, I love. Does anything beyond that is yeah. just? Oh boy! You're just caught this. up in the cycle of like. It's interesting. If if the destination for you as a You're fan is again. winning a Super Bowl, what is what's what could possibly be fulfilling next besides more Super Bowls, right? So That's I don't plan to do this. I love the National Football League, and I want I want to continue doing the show with you guys. So I I will I'll I will know. keep watching the Vikings. Um, but this is this is hardcore. I mean, I, I, this is not even remotely comparable. But that's my fantasy football outlook. Like, I finally won my dynasty league after nine years, and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I mean, I got a little tired of it too. That was on the pie chart, but I was like, this is it. I did it. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, I actually love this idea. I think this is really. If the Twins won a World Series, I might be able to quit baseball finally. That actually sounds great yeah, to me. I actually already quit baseball. Yeah, so exactly. It's very, it's, yeah, it's very liberating. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I could quit. I don't think I could I, do it. I I'm don't like, I don't think I'm capable. I'm dead serious. This is like I love this idea. You just kind of move your energy into other things yeah. in life. Like, like what would this you do is, on Sunday? Well, oh, did you guys I, ever did you guys ever see oh, the documentary God. of the guy that Alex Honnold guy, uh free solo? He yeah, he solo climbed with no harness or safety net or rope or anything. This like a seven hour climb up this uh this mountainside, basically. So any slip and you're dead, right? Mm-hmm. This was his. This was his. Once I do this, he didn't do it again. He did it. Okay, I checked that off. That was okay. consuming my life for a long time. Wanting to do this, it's over, and right. now I'm going to move into other things in my life. But like, if you win a Super Bowl as a player, <laughs> I could see what walking away because you've done the equivalent of of getting to the top of the mountain. But as a fan, like. I can't give it up. I give it I'm up with you. I'm, I'm with you, considering but I, it. I consider res- it. I respect the hardcore nature of this. I mean, it's a great. It's it's really interesting. Huh? Something mm. to think about. Yeah. Well, something to think about. Um, similarly, so uh, Bob Castelline sends an email into the show, and uh, I'm just gonna. It's a little long. I'm gonna kind of take some snippets here. You guys ask people how they got started with the Vikings when you bring people on. Write that down. For me, it was September 28th, 1969. I was nine years old, and my dad, who actually hated the Vikings, got tickets from a relative in Minnesota. He's from, they're from Des Moines, Iowa. So he took me to my first football game. The Vikings played the Baltimore Colts on this September day in 1969. Uh, the Colts had just come off the famous loss to Joe Namath to the Jets in the Super Bowl, still a very good team at the time. The Vikings destroyed the Colts that day, 52 to 14. This is just before Judd was born, I think, right? Yep, a few months. Joe Cap set an NFL record that day, throwing seven touchdown passes. I was instantly a huge Vikings fan, and Joe Cap became my hero, still is. In my nine year old mind, this was how it would would be for every game just seven touchdowns, 52 to 14. This is uh this is kind of what the '98 season was for some of us. Wow, this is great. This is yep. gonna be like this every year. Nope. Um, boy, was I wrong. Bob says, but it doesn't matter. I love the Vikings. Fast forward to January 9th, 1977. The Vikings had just lost their fourth Super Bowl, blown out by the Raiders. My older brother and my dad, who, as I mentioned, hated the Vikings, were giving me the business throughout the entire game. 
Mm-hmm. As a 16-year-old hothead, I didn't take it very well. I went to my room, <laughs> slammed my door, and yelled, lashed out at my dad, you're such a bleep hole, I hate you. Whoa. Oh, no. Wow. My dad died a few hours later of a massive heart attack oh, no. on the same day that the Vikings lost their fourth Super Bowl. Watching the Vikings lose their fourth straight Super Bowl and my dad dying on the same day was pretty hard to take. I know I didn't kill him by yelling at him, but that's what it felt like. The day wrecked me for a long time. As you can imagine, winning the Super Bowl would be as important to me as anything in sports could be. Man. That is heavy, man. Bob did get a chance to meet uh, Joe Cap later in life, which is kind of cool. But... uh, it is amazing how I mean we've heard so many stories just doing this show and Purple oh, Daily from terrible. And we you know we tell you every we we want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die but I think that before we die thing it hits close to home for a lot of people. Yes. You know? Well, yeah. And and I mean this is an extreme story but just I think there's a lot when when you have um a sports team in in baseball, football, etc get passed down right from generation to you like you know like like your grandpa watched it with your dad watched it with you yeah i mean i think it holds a meaning to to people that's not just uh hey we sort of like that team yeah. you know they spend every sunday and you think about the ebbs and flows of this again a franchise which has been really good for a really long time so it's not like 10 years of horse bleep and you all check out like they string you along. So, yeah. but I mean, this, this, this example is beyond extreme. That's awful. I mean, what a terrible day in that poor guy's life. Yeah. And I think the other thing I appreciate, by the way, so, so I, I recognize Bob because Bob and I have had some, uh, some, some back and forth on Twitter, you know, arguing about stuff. And, uh, and I, I don't have the email, the full email pulled up anymore, but Bob said, you know, listen, we disagree. I chirp you on Twitter, but, still love your show and love like the spirit of it. And I think that's one of the things we appreciate is we have strong opinions. We are wrong. Oftentimes we, ha- we are rooted in certain, like we criticize the team more than some other shows and, and whatnot. And I think it's really cool when people can maybe disagree with half of the things they hear from Judd or me, or get pissed at Declan defending Greg Joseph or whatever it is, no, I get but we're all, but we're all here for the same reason, which is we love football, right? We want to see the Vikings win a Super Bowl at some point. And um, it's just become an awesome community. The fact that Bob and other people feel comfortable sharing personal stories like this, I think it, it always, uh, it's just kind of cool for us to to see that. So thank you for sending that in, Bob. Um, on a totally different note here, Pulford Skoll, our guy down in Nashville, has some reckless speculation. Ooh, nice. Reckless speculation. Presented by our friends at Federated. Federated's been around helping businesses for over 100 years helping to maximize businesses' success through risk management tools and resources. And uh, you can tap into a wealth of knowledge and experience, expertise, great people, face-to-face relationships at federatedinsurance.com, where it's our business to protect yours. Pulford says, I've been talking about this for a couple of days now, and Pat McAfee talked about it on his show this week too. If Brock Purdy keeps playing solid football and takes the Niners far, do you think they will make a change away from him? I understand they have a great offensive line, weapons and system in place for everyone, but he still has to run and make plays. He's making plays. His ball looks great. He's not turning it over. He can run. I'm not saying, uh, I'm saying next spring, Quasi Adolfa Mensa needs to call up John Lynch <laughs> and make an offer for Trey Lance. Mm-hmm. If the Niners decide, well, I guess Brock Purdy's our Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it won't take three first-round picks anymore. He can sit behind Kirk and learn and heal for the 2023 season. And if Kirk goes down, we can have a reliable starter in, in waiting. The kid's an athlete. He can play. Still don't know if he can manage in the NFL. Uh, I went to NDSU, watched every one of his games, and he and Christian Watson dominated the FCS. Trey is also really fast, a great runner. What do you think about this? Would you Would you consider – I'll throw Declan's guy in too, like Zach Wilson. Would you consider buying extremely low on a former top, top pick and stashing that person behind Kirk for a year? Uh, The answer is absolutely yes, because keep in mind, I have a coach that I trust to tell me what they think is possible. That's been the problem with this team for a long time is they didn't have the infrastructure in place with with the most important people in the building to say, I can fix that. Or you know what? That's a lost cause. 
Um, I believe the Vikings have had interest in Lance before. So, like, I do think that they – I think Zach Wilson, I, I would say no. Um, partially, yeah, too. That dude, that dude rubs me the wrong way. Too. Well, he, like, yeah. he rubs me the wrong way, but it's also unfortunate. And, like, the, I think we've discussed this before, but there are some guys who might have had potential, but they're taken by such a bad dysfunctional franchise, they're just screwed. Uh, Zach Wilson rubs me the wrong way, but I also feel like now playing in that market – playing with the Jets, like they're just still dysfunctional. See, Trey I L- think Robert Salas that I actually, I actually think less of Zach Wilson because he is the weak link okay. on a Robert Sala team that everything else is kind of clicking. I mm-hmm. think Robert Sala, though, is proving offensively he struggles. Chris Streveler being put in instead of Flacco to a National Football League game is a very college-type move. Streveler can't throw the ball. Like, he literally almost carries it to the intended target. He can run the ball really well. <laughs> He's a great college player. He's a great CFL player. I, I think yeah. I think Salah has some zim to, to him in the sense that I think players still – I think they like him now, you know, and two or three, three years into Mike, they definitely, I think, appreciated Mike. That being said, I think offensively, this is why I want an O'Connell because I trust him to know what he is watching. Trey Lance, though, quickly is a very interesting target. Now, d- does that mean San Fran brings back Purdy? Because if I'm not mistaken, Garoppolo walks. So Garoppolo, I don't see, I don't see Garoppolo with the way he's been treated going back there. Yeah. But Trey Lance is in the second year of a contract, and his base salary for 2022 is 2.2 million dollars next year it's 3.8 uh, 3. 2024 he's still signed and 25 is the option so if they're going to stick with purdy it's an interesting target and and conversation if you go one more year of kirk and now and now lance sits again and this is why it's very incumbent upon, upon uh i think o'connell to be the voice here which is oh hell yeah i can work with him you got to shorten up if nothing else the delivery it's too it's too tebow-esque but i think there's talent there yeah i, I mean i would have to know what the compensation going back is and i know this is going to sound potentially uh potentially dumb and i'm sure there are examples i'm trying to think of who are flame out top five picks top 10 quarterback picks that went on to a new scenery and and thrived off the top I mean, off the complete top for noggin i'm sure there does, are people does alex alex Alex, Alex Smith, Smith. Got, he got new scenery but, within his organization when yeah. Jim Harbaugh came yeah. along. But Lance yeah. didn't flame out. That's what's intriguing. He's never gotten the chance because he got hurt. Like, That's like true. Zach, Zach Wilson, Wilson flamed, flamed out. Yeah. yeah. Trey Lance is not a bust. He is a complete unknown. Yeah. He might be a bust. We don't know. He please right. played a game and a half or whatever. Super interesting. I would, I, I do think the Vikings, we keep saying this, but like they haven't truly planned for life after Kirk. Now, for a while, we were trying to force that to happen on this show a little earlier than uh, <laughs> than they did. But you've got, he's going to be 35 years old next year. He doesn't exactly have, first of all, there's not many quarterbacks. You can't just look at the outliers like Breeze and yeah. Favre. Like, there's like five or six guys who were really effective at 37, 38, in Brady's case, 44, 45. So you do need to start preparing. Now, does Kirk take care of himself? Yes. Like, Kirk Kirk, absolutely puts his body and his mind. He's, you know, he's he's well put together for a 34-year-old dude. He really is. So I do think he can play effectively for multiple years. But, like, if you have a chance to, to maybe buy low on someone and put them in the system, sit them behind Kirk for a year, and then you can make the decision going into his age 36 season, my worry would be, if you make the deal, yeah, to Declan's point, what's the price? But then also, would I then be getting into, like, with Trey Lance, I wouldn't even think about starting him until, like, his fourth year in the league. And now the value is much diminished because you'd only get, like, one year of cheap and then a fifth-year option, which is going to be a lot more expensive. And then you have to pay him if he's good. Yeah. So you'd you'd have to have your team ready to rock and take advantage of the year or maybe two years where he's – you know, on a discounted contract. Pulford, though, that's a great question. Love it. We can explore more of that, too. That's really reckless, Pulford. Anytime you want to bring reckless speculation to the table here. Reckless speculation. We're open for business.